Okay, so my name is Malia Lorenz and I'm here with Haley Feel. So if Haley, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, say your name, your age, and then your college plans maybe. Uh, my name is Haley Feel. I am 18 years old and I am planning on attending LSA at the University of Michigan starting in the fall. That's so exciting. So school has been closed for two months now. Uh, what were your initial thoughts going into the closure at first when we closed up uh, March 13th? I mean, and when um, we going back? At first, I think my main concern was the cancellation of the musical and how many months we spent yeah. just preparing for the musical and then having to cancel it. Well, not fully cancel it. We got to live stream and have our parents show up which was really nice, but um, definitely a huge bummer to not be able to do the full weekend. Um, and then after that, I think at first I was definitely thankful for the break just because senior year is so crazy, but you know, it's two months out and I'm just kind of going a little stir crazy. So, <laughs> All right, so uh, kind of moving in towards uh, your student life, how have you been keeping up with your schoolwork? Um, the main thing I've done, which I found really useful to keeping up, is to make sure that every day I'm writing down three things that I have to do for school and making sure that I do those three things that way. Like, I'm not so overwhelmed by all the assignments that I'm seeing in my emails and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can just focus on three small tasks and get those done and then if I feel the need to like do more then I can but if I'm just like emotionally exhausted then I can like take the rest of the day for myself. So would you say it's been difficult to keep up with your schoolwork? Um, I would say more so than it usually is just because there's no one there to keep you accountable mm -hmm. but um, for the most part I've been able to keep myself accountable and keep up with everything. Good. I know for other people, it's probably a lot harder just because, like, internet is such a huge issue in our area. Right. Um, we don't have access to internet at my house, but we're lucky enough to have, like, unlimited data plans on our phones, so I'm lucky in that aspect. So would you say that, it, that you've struggled with finding the motivation to do online schoolwork? Definitely have struggled. I mean, before I was even struggling in school just because it's so close to the end of the year and I'm about to graduate right. and move on to college. So being at home has definitely like exasperated the lack of motivation, but you just got to keep trucking along. We got one more week. Yeah. So how would you say you have been motivating yourself to do so besides writing your three things down and everything? Uh, just keeping in mind the end goal mm -hmm. of graduating and moving on. You know, you don't want anything negative to show up on your transcript for colleges, especially for me because I have a full ride. So any like mm -hmm. sudden changes in my grades can really throw off the university and they can like revoke that full ride whenever they want. So it's a lot of pressure on me to keep performing well. Yeah. So you are the Benzie Central High School Class of 2020 salutatorian. Congratulations, by the way. So what kind of pressure has been put on you throughout this quarantine being the salutatorian? Oh, um, well, in addition to all of my classes, including three AP exams that I'm preparing for, well, I just finished two, I have one more to go. Um, I have to write a speech for graduation and I have to be prepared to deliver the speech either virtually or in person. So mm -hmm. that's kind of stressful. I feel like the dynamic definitely changes when you're either like in front of an audience or just recording yourself. Oh, absolutely. So that's definitely a challenge and something I've been trying to navigate these past couple of weeks. Um, and then other than that, I feel like I'm definitely someone that people look up to just because I'm the salutatorian and people see like I get good grades and stuff and they look up to that so I feel like if I let that stuff slack then I might be letting down other people that look up to me for like inspiration. 
Well, props to you for keeping that in mind. But going back to your salutatorian speech, what kind of topics are you planning on discussing? Um, a lot of things I have been considering have to do with things that I've learned throughout quarantine. So I definitely want to talk about like self-care and um, and I also want to talk about like, I guess, shared trauma because we're all going through a shared trauma together. So I want to open the conversation to something a little bit more serious than just, oh, we're the class of 2020. We did it. Yay. You know, um, I definitely want to bring a more serious tone, but also I don't want it to be like a snooze fest. So trying to keep that balance is a little bit difficult. <laughs> Have you started writing the speech yet? Or are you just no, mostly ideas? just um, thinking through ideas and writing down stuff. And I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos oh, on cool. the topics that I like to discuss. So, Well, I personally cannot wait to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you miss most about going to school? I miss most see, just seeing people, seeing my friends and my teachers. I never realized how big of a part of my life all my teachers are and all of my friends. So I definitely miss that. Um, I miss having that structure because when you don't have the structure, it's a lot harder to stay motivated and uh, keep yourself accountable. So the structure I miss. Um, but I definitely don't miss waking up early. That's a big plus. Yeah, I bet. So what is your biggest priority as a student? Um, my biggest priority would have to be just learning in general. I think that's your main goal as a student, but right. um, also- I mean, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. For grades, I mean, I wish grades weren't as big of a deal to me as they are, but obviously with having a full ride and trying to like obtain as much financial aid as possible, grades are like a huge aspect of the learning experience, especially for a high schooler thinking about moving on to college. All right. So what advice would you give to struggling students? I would say, Hmm, that's a tough one. I definitely you can take a minute to think about it too if you need to. I definitely think that you should try to find a reason why you love learning, even if you're in a subject that you're not necessarily excited to be learning about. Mm -hmm. Try to find like one aspect that you enjoy about it and focus that or maybe try to connect something you love to that subject, even if you don't necessarily find anything about that subject interesting. Like, I know for me, I really like doing art and stuff. So connecting art with what I'm learning really helps me to obtain the information and uh, remember it for later. Has, have you found it any more difficult to absorb information through online learning? Oh, definitely. I um, have already had experience with online classes I took my foreign language online, and I have also dual enrolled online. So I've definitely noticed sort of like this disconnect with how much information you can retain from those classes. But at the same time, it just kind of falls back on you where are you doing the things you need to do to retain the knowledge? Because when you have a teacher there to keep you accountable, you kind of can let that fall on them and then they can help you retain the knowledge, but when you're alone, it's pretty much all on you to figure out how you're gonna remember that. Absolutely. So it's definitely challenging. challenging. Uh, so how has the coronavirus changed your outlook of being a student? It definitely has made me realize that school isn't everything, that I need to start focusing more on things that I'm genuinely passionate about and not sweat the little things as much, which I think is a cool perspective to view life through, but um, also just makes me a little bit more worried about my future, you know, just with all the uncertainty surrounding it. For sure. But 
it's definitely given me a lot of time to reflect and learn from the past and everything. So I feel confident, like once this is all over, I'll be able to move past it and come out stronger at the end. So you think you'll um, ultimately be better off uh, coming out of quarantine than you were going into it? Oh, for sure. Definitely. Like, when you're alone, like, we're all forced to be right now. It just forces you to really, like, think about all of the different aspects of your life. And um, I've been doing a lot of thinking about the future. So uh, you come out more prepared than you would if there was no, like, stopping and smelling the roses going on. Right. I've actually heard some people say that quarantine is has been a blessing in disguise. Do you agree with that? I definitely agree with that. It sounds horrible to say just because there's so much suffering going on. Absolutely. But yeah. for me personally, I've definitely benefited in a lot of ways that were unforeseen before the virus. All right. So kind of moving into your home life, what kind of changes have you made to adjust to the stay at home orders? Um, well, for my family, my mom's a healthcare worker, so she has been spending, like, not a lot of time around us as much as possible, which has been a little bit difficult to deal with just because she's, you know, working a lot and then coming home, showering immediately, and then going straight into her room just so that she's avoiding contact with all of us. So that's been difficult. Um, uh, it's been a little difficult to stay getting along with everyone in the house, you know, when you're all trapped together for months on end. So that's been a struggle, but also given us the opportunity to sort of navigate all of the emotions that we're feeling with each other and all of our frustrations with each other. So it's good and bad. There's pros and cons. So how has your family entirely responded to the situation? aside from like the job struggles and everything with your mom and uh, trying to avoid contact, what about your siblings? Uh, I would say my sisters have adjusted a lot better than I would think. They have been keeping up pretty well with their schoolwork. Uh, it's been a little bit challenging, obviously, because learning new content on your own without a teacher, especially for someone that young, for Sophie, she's nine, so. And then how old is Abby? Abby's 13, so they're both a lot younger than me, and so I've been responsible for helping them a lot with their homework, mm -hmm. which has been another stress added to me, but they've been troopers, so I'm pretty proud of them. That actually kind of leads me into my next question. So as the oldest sibling, what kind of responsibilities have come from the stay-at-home order? Uh, definitely what I mentioned before, the homework help has been difficult because you kind of become a teacher and a student at the same time so that's been rough but we've gotten through it and my sisters have been actually a lot more independent with their work than I thought so it's that's been impressive. really nice I couldn't imagine doing online school at nine no it's insane but Sophie has like an amazingly supportive teacher who understands that they're nine-year-olds so <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely good. She's been really stressed out, but whenever she gets stressed, her teacher just reminds her, Sophie, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a stress-free zone. So that's been helpful, having really supportive teachers. And then um, on other responsibilities, I already really, I already had these responsibilities before quarantine, but like <laughs> cooking dinners and cleaning the house has been exasperated just because we're all at home constantly. So mm -hmm. there's always a huge pile of dishes, three meals a day that everyone's responsible for. So that's different. But uh, having the time to do all of those things has been helpful too. So. Mm -hmm. so people are obviously using social media as a communication outlet. And there's been so many trends throughout quarantine, like memes and videos that have become popular, like the uh, one of the celebrities singing Imagine. <laughs> so I was just curious if you had a favorite one yet. That you might need a minute to think about it, because I don't even know if I could pick my own, but. 
Well, you mentioned the uh, Imagine video, which I actually found, <laughs> I found it really funny because <laughs> oh, these celebrities are going to solve it by singing in a thousand different keys to <laughs> us. But, um, yeah, my boyfriend and I really got a kick out of that video. He even made like a little edit of it. So definitely I think that one's our favorite just because of the laughs we've gotten out of it. <laughs> How do you think celebrities are responding to it? Like, what do you think of their response to it, I should say? Uh, I kind of have mixed feelings about it because I've seen some really good responses and some really bad ones mm -hmm. where like the bad ones it's more of the celebrities are like oh we're in this together like we're all on the same playing field now and it's like no we're not <laughs> you get to live in a mansion you don't have to go to work as an essential worker you know we're not on the same playing field but then on the other hand, I've seen a lot of other celebrities like um, Ashley Graham. Every Monday, I believe she does like a workout video with her trainer on Instagram Live. So that's like giving people an opportunity to work with a super expensive trainer that they otherwise would have never gotten the opportunity right. to work with. So there's definitely been a mix of good and bad responses from different celebrities. Mm -hmm. All right, so what kind of new hobbies has quarantine brought to light for you? Uh, definitely meditation and um, hiking. And hiking has been probably my favorite just because I've been able to explore the area a lot more than I would if I was like do being a full-time student in high school cr right now. Um, and being able to see just the natural beauty of northern Michigan. It's insane that we get to live up here. Yeah. So I'm definitely extremely thankful for that. And then meditation, I have loved because it gives me the opportunity to just be present and stop worrying about the future for a few minutes and just sort of clear my mind and get in the space that I need to be to continue like doing my work and taking care of myself and everything. All right, the video's lagging a little bit, so I'm going to see if it'll catch up in a second. All right, it might be. I'm not sure yet, but uh, do you think that you'll continue these hobbies or activities after quarantine is over? I definitely hope I will be able to. I know once this is over, life is going to be busy, busy again, so hopefully I'll be able to hold on to these hobbies that I've started because I definitely think they make a positive impact in my life, and I'll probably make a conscious effort to try to keep them in my life for sure so what are your thoughts on our community's response to the outbreak like Benzie County overall I have been really surprised by how strong the community is I know there's always like gonna be arguments and stuff and no one's ever gonna all agree on everything but as far as the school's response with having set up you know uh, meals every three days for the students and having the buses drop them off to the people's houses has been a huge help for my family and I know for a lot of other families in the area Absolutely. and then just having the school stay current on uh, social media and keeping everyone updated with what's going on I've been really thankful for that too um, I also really like the idea that they did the senior salutes for everyone this year, just because there's no certainty that we're going to be able to have an in-person graduation, and it gives the community a little insight into all of the students' lives. So, yeah, I've actually really enjoyed reading those. Mm -hmm. All right. So, is there anything that you have to say to essential workers at this time? Um, I would definitely say that everyone is extremely thankful for you and we couldn't do it without you and we know that you're not receiving hazard pay right now, but everyone believes fully that you should be and uh, I just hope that you're able to stay safe, even though you're being exposed to a lot of uh, people every day. Absolutely. So um, something that's been kind of reoccurring in the news and everything since quarantine started and since the stay at home orders have been really uh,
pushed, I guess, um, is the protests in Lansing and also in other states. So what are your thoughts about the protests? I actually have sort of mixed feelings about it just because I really disagree with how the government has handled this. I don't think they can expect businesses to be shut down and people to lose their jobs without paying them a recurring monthly payment. So there's obviously like a legitimate reason for people to be upset. And I think a lot of people just don't realize like how bad these people that are protesting are hurting that would lead them to go protest and hold guns and everything and put themselves at danger. It's because that, well, for the most part, it's because they're hurting financially. I think there's a lot of people that are, um, you know, the people that are, oh, I want to get my hair cut or I need this and that. And it's like luxury things. There's definitely that side of it. But there's also the side of people that are hurting a lot and they just need, they need the money to get by during this time because sure. if you're not going to let them open and you're not going to give them financial help during this time, what are they supposed to do? So. Yeah, it's definitely um, been evident that the financial struggles during this time are very, very real. Mm -hmm. So moving into our final thoughts, um, what has been the best part of your quarantine experience? The best part for me is that I've gotten the time to spend with my boyfriend just because before quarantine, we barely were able to see each other or spend like any quality time together just because I was so busy with school and the musical. He also did the musical, but he was also working a job after mm -hmm. school. So I guess just being able to connect with him and learn more about each other in the process. That's beautiful. So what has been the worst part of the quarantine experience? The worst part is probably just all of the mi the missed experiences of, you know, missing my last prom. I miss all my friends, uh, missing my last musical and uh, my last choir concert. And it's just everything adding up. And it's like I'm missing a huge chunk of my life that I never thought that I would be missing. But um, huge blow. So with the uh, school-related things that we've been missing out on, do you, how do you think, do you think the school has been, um, I guess, handling it properly to kind of make up for what we've lost? Is uh, there I think they personally would want to add? I think they're doing exactly what they think is best for us. I don't think anyone really knows what the right answer is during this time right now. Um, like there's no way we're gonna be able to have our prom like that's just not gonna happen like if they I guess they discussed doing a virtual prom but it was shot down because like no one wants to do that that's just not something that people are gonna have fun at it's gonna be more depressing than fun so yeah. I think it's good that they're not forcing that sort of thing on us it just giving us the space to grieve what we've lost there's just certain things that they can't give to us that we've missed and and I think they're going to try their best to give what they can to us which is a graduation and I think they're going to try their best to give that to us but other than that I don't think there's a lot that they that is in their hands that they can do. Mm -hmm. Out of all the things that they've done what do you think is one of the most admirable aside from like the school lunches and everything? Because I know that teachers have been, um, they've just been like keeping in contact with us. And then the elementary school teachers have been like reading stories to the kids and everything virtually, up, of course. But um, I think one of the most admirable things is just like the strength of the teachers, you know, like Absolutely. they're all in uncharted territory. Most of them haven't ever experienced teaching an online class. So the transition was extremely abrupt. And they've all been forced into this unknown territory, but I think they've all handled it amazingly. And uh, they've all been extremely understanding, at least on my part with, you know, if I'm 
if I'm turning something in late because I couldn't use the internet that night or whatever it was, they're all, they've all been extremely understanding. So I just think the teachers in general, everything they've done has been really admirable. For sure. So our hopes for the future could end up being very different from the reality, but what do you hope the world will be like after this? Like what is your perfect case scenario for post quarantine? I mean, I think the thing that I'm, I really hope sticks is that people um, start uh, using less like cars and and start like transitioning more to public transportation just because like we've known we've noticed in the bigger cities like the smog has cleared out of the air because people are staying home and they're not driving so definitely the environmental aspect is something that's been on my mind a lot i think everyone needs to remember like the impact that we truly have on earth and i think that the quarantine has definitely opened a lot of people's eyes to it. For sure. So now that we've discussed what you hope the world will be like, what do you think the world will be like? Hmm. Did I word that? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So, well, I do hope that people will be more environmental, environmentally conscious. I don't necessarily think that will happen just because so many people are like striving to gain that sense of normalcy again. And I don't think a lot of people are going to be able to accept the fact that the new normal isn't going to look like the old normal. So there's probably going to be a lot of, a lot of people just trying to like hold on for dear life to those old aspects of life that we just can't have anymore. Right, right. So what are your post-quarantine plans? Like, what do you think the first thing that you're going to do post-quarantine? Mm. I don't know. So in an ideal world, it would just end one day and we could all see each other. But I know it's going to be more of a gradual thing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of difficult to answer that question. But if I'm answering for my ideal world, it would just be to be able to see you Aww. and all of my friends and all of my teachers again and just like have that one final goodbye yeah all right so thank you so much for doing this interview so before i stop recording are there any final thoughts or words of advice that you would like to leave us with uh, i just tell everyone to take this moment i know a lot of people are hurting I know things are really uncertain, but I think if you have the opportunity to take this moment, smell the roses and reflect on your life a little bit and just take this moment to slow down because our lives go by so fast. Everything is so busy, especially with um, the America's capitalistic values. Everything's go, go, go productivity. So just take this moment. It might be the only one you have and slow down a little bit. Very well put. Well, thank you so much, Haley. It's been so much fun record or doing this interview with you so thank you so much